there's so many creative ways to go out there and become resourceful because a slowdown, anytime there's change, a recession, that change, that fear represents opportunity, but only the resourceful will be able to take care of it. Welcome, everybody, to The Chris Harder Show, where we are making you unapologetic about your pursuit of success, knowing that when good people like you make good money, they can then do great things. My name is Chris Harder, and several times per week, I will bring you epic guests, solo episodes, and every single tool, trick, and skill set you need to grow your business, grow your money mindset, and to grow your wealth to levels that you have never reached before. I've ended up in a unique place in life where I've got the experience, the connections, and all of the secrets that it takes to be successful. And and I'm lifting the curtain to reveal it all to you in an effort to help put you in a position of abundance so great that you can then be as generous as possible. So let's lock arms and let's get started. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Chris Harder Show. It's another Money Monday here where we absolutely believe that both prosperity and generosity can and must coexist. All right, so today we're going to talk about your money when you're facing a slowdown or when you're facing a recession. You know, there's more and more news about an impending recession. There's more and more news about economic slowdown. I feel like you can't escape people talking about it right now. You can't escape all the, the predictions of the housing market, the predictions of the stock market. I mean, when I look at my own portfolio in the stock market, it's down 43% right now. So it ain't pretty, but it doesn't have to determine your outcome. Remember, I told you I was going to be the brightest, most informational beam of light for you to rely on through this slowdown. And that's exactly what I intend to do. And that is exactly what today's episode is about. So are you worried about a slowdown? Are you stressed about a possible recession coming up. I'll be honest, it's a very likely recession coming up. But you don't have to be stressed. You don't have to be worried. Because both in good times and in bad times, your results are always all about your preparation. If you're not prepared and if you're not doing the right things, even in good times, you're going to lose. So good times or bad times, it doesn't matter. It's in your control. It's all about your preparation. And that's what we're going to talk about today. You don't have to worry about a recession as long as you have your arms around what I call the five R's. The five R's. What are the five R's? Well, listen, I've done countless episodes on how a recession really isn't that big of a dip in business, right? Mathematically speaking, you still have, you know, 96, 97, 98% of the pie to go out there and eat from. And you only need like one hundredth or one thousandth of a percent of that slice of pie for you to hit your goals. So it really isn't that big of a dip. People make a bigger deal out of it than it has to be, especially if you are prepared. So first and foremost, don't psych yourself out. Convince yourself that it has to turn out bad or that things around you are bad if they're not. And that's the first R, by the way. Live in your reality. Stay in your reality. What is really going on for you? Don't live in the future because that's where anxiety comes from. Don't live in other people's reality. They might be having a hard time. But if business is good for you, if your finances are fine right now, if as of today, you've got the customers you need and, and a good pipeline of potential customers coming your way, then forget about all the negative talk out there and forget about everyone else that's worried. Be present and remain in your reality. Your reality is the exact snapshot of what you have today. So do you have a roof over your head? Yes. Do you have some money in the bank? Hopefully, but don't worry, we're going to talk about that if you don't have enough. Do you have people that love you and care for you? Hopefully. Hopefully, the more the merrier when it comes to that. Do you have your health? Yes. Do you have your abilities? Here's the best part. Do you have your abilities? Can you roll up your sleeves, work harder? Can you roll up your sleeves, get more creative? Can you roll up your sleeves and do whatever it takes to, to kill something and drag it back to the cave if you have to? Yes. If that's your reality, then don't worry about the other stuff. The first R is your reality counts and your reality only, not anyone else's. Stay away from the doomsdayers, the predictors. They're not talking about reality. They might be talking about the overall potential of, of what the nation's reality or the world's reality might be, but they're not talking about your micro reality. I want you to remember, you live in a micro economy that you determine. You have a micro reality that just relates to you, and that's the one we have to worry about. All right, the second R is runway. What does that mean? 
Runway is the number of months that if you didn't have another dollar coming in, you could still keep the roof over your head, food in your stomach, take care of your family, and pay for the operation of your business. This is for the entrepreneurs out there. R is for runway. Now, you have to have 12 months runway. Now, if you hear this and you panic and you're like, oh, I don't have 12 months of runway in the bank, that's not the only runway out there. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. The calculation for runway is this. Add up all of your personal expenses that are necessary. If you've got some fluff in there, that doesn't necessarily count as part of your runway. But all your necessary re- expenses to keep up your, the important parts of your lifestyle right now. And whatever that is in a month, you take that times 12. And that's how much personal runway you need. And then add up your business expenses. Again, not the fluff, just the ones like you want to keep these team members on. You got to keep paying for these ads. You got to keep the, the software membership going, right? Add up your business expenses. Take that times 12. That is your 12 months runway. Those two numbers together. So if you don't have that much cash in the bank, don't panic. Maybe your runway is you going out and getting a line of credit that is equal to those 12 months that is open, but you don't have to use it. Maybe your runway is, and I'm not an advocate of going out and spending on credit cards, but tough times call for unique measures. Maybe your runway is going out and getting enough credit cards that have open ability to spend on them that adds up to your 12 months. Maybe you've got like three months in the bank. Maybe you've got three months of runway on your credit cards, and maybe you go out and you get six months worth of runway in the form of a line of credit. Maybe it's time to tap into some of that home equity that we all have record home equity if if you're a homeowner right now. Maybe it's time to go get an SBA loan from the business just to have enough runway. But that second R is runway. You have to find a way to get 12 months. You can't wait until you're in trouble. This is the funny thing about runway. You build your runway before the trouble comes. So I want you guys to roll up your sleeves. I want you to do whatever it takes to go out there and find 12 months runway. Then you can sleep at night. Then you won't have to worry. Because in 12 months, you can reinvent, you can pivot, you can wait out the recession, you can do whatever it takes. That's why you got to go get 12 months runway. All right, the next R is for revenue. And specifically, reoccurring revenue. I want you to take a look at your business. I want you to take a look at where your income comes from. And I want you to separate it. I want you to figure out, okay, how much of this revenue is earned income, meaning I have to to be working right now in order to get this paycheck, I have to be working right now in order to earn this revenue, and how much of it is reoccurring revenue. I want you to, from now all the way through next year, I want you to be concentrating on building sources of reoccurring revenue. So what does that look like for Lori and I? Well, we have our investments that pay us money every single month. That's a form of reoccurring revenue. We still have a significant income from an isogenics business that we built years ago. That's reoccurring revenue. We've got a little bit of rental income coming in. That's reoccurring revenue. We've got a couple of notes. In other words, loans that we made to people that they're they're paying in. That's reoccurring revenue. So we have all these different verticals of, of reoccurring revenue that helps us determine that, okay, our runway that is needed is offset by the amount of reoccurring revenue that is likely to stick around. So I want you to take a look at your income sources and say, okay, how much reoccurring revenue do I have? And if I don't have enough to cover my minimum living expenses, if I don't have enough to cover my minimum business expenses, then it's time for you to concentrate on either creating a product or inventing a product or going out and earning a reoccurring revenue source. What can you add How resourceful can you get? And that's the next R, resourcefulness. Who and what do you have as resources to help you through a slowdown? Perhaps it's customers or a customer base that you have not tapped into yet. Maybe it's even one that you're not excited about tapping into. But again, in unique times, you have to be resourceful and create unique solutions. Maybe your resourcefulness is a business partner that you've never pursued, but now they can bring some capital to the business and help you manage it and and expand the business. Maybe it's a skill set or a product line that you've always thought about launching that you have yet to launch. Time to get that out there. You know, here's an example of resourcefulness I love. I watched people get really, really resourceful in the last recession. And those who got the most resourceful, they're the ones that actually got richer in the recession. I had a business partner. He went around buying distressed banknotes, distressed mortgages, bought for pennies on the dollar, then refinanced that person and their note into a lower amount so they owed less on their home. 
And then he was able to collect an income from them making payments until he was able to sell the notes, sell the homes for more than he had invested into the note. There's so many creative ways to go out there and become resourceful because a slowdown, anytime there's change, a recession, that change, that fear represents opportunity, but only the resourceful will be able to take care of it. The next R and the last R is this, restrict or reduce. What can you cut to lower your exposure until things get easier again, until we're out of the slowdown? Maybe you could live in a smaller place for a year. Here's a great example. Oh, I love this example. I just thought of it. I've got a friend, his name is Ben. And he had a slowdown in his business. And he realized he needed to do something resourceful in order to make ends meet. So what did he do? Ben was living in a beautiful home in LA. And he realized that his mortgage on that home was about $5,000 a month. And he could rent the place for $20,000 a month. So he picked up his family, reluctantly, that's the key word there, reluctantly moved them out of that beautiful home, rented it out for 20 grand, paid his $5,000 mortgage, and profited $15,000 a month for two years while he got his business turned around. Now, he didn't want to move out. His wife really didn't want to move out. The kids were in high school. They didn't want to move out. But this is where some of you get stuck. This is where, remember, I always say ego is your greatest overhead. He was willing to do what other people wouldn't do so he could invent that extra $15,000 a month. And they went and they rented a very small place for two years. And guess what? At the end of that story, they moved back into their home. Just two years was all it took. He turned his business around and they all moved right back into that beautiful, luxurious home. Are you willing to do things like that? Ego is your greatest overhead and therefore, therefore will cost you more during a slowdown than the actual slowdown will. Guys, I really hope you understand that this is in your control. We have plenty of warnings still. There's plenty of money to be made still. There's plenty of, of opportunity in front of you still in order to prepare yourself. But that's the key. You have to prepare yourself with these five R's. Number one, you got to live in your reality. Don't buy into the other BS if it's not your reality. Number two, runway. You need 12 months of runway for your personal expenses and your business expenses. Go find any way to get it, but get it today. The next R is revenue, specifically reoccurring revenue. Figure out how much you have and then go invent or add some more reoccurring revenue. And by the way, you can also just invent extra revenue. It doesn't have to be re reoccurring. The more revenue, the better in a slowdown. And the next R is resourcefulness. Who and what do you have as resources to help you through a slowdown? And the last R is restrict or reduce. What can you cut to lower your exposure? and lower your worrying until things are fruitful again. I hope this helped. It's always my goal to help you through these things. I help you every single morning when I shoot you a text message. All you have to do is send me the word daily. Text me the word daily to 310-421-0416. Again, text me the word daily to 310-421-0416. I'll put you on my daily text list where every morning you're going to wake up to some kind of positive money mantra or positive business perspective, just like this podcast, only mini tidbits every single morning. Imagine your feet hitting the ground with the right empowering perspective. That's what I do for you. So text me the word daily to 310-421-0416. In the meantime, nothing to be worried about because you're in control of your five hours. Love and appreciate you listening. Take care. Thanks for listening. And if you loved this episode and know of someone else who is as successful as they are generous, please pass them on to me. It would mean the world to me if you help me get this cause and this message out to as many listeners as I can. So please, if you liked what you heard, it goes a long way if you take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and share this with your friends. I'll be forever grateful. And until the next episode, cheers to your success.